Hello and welcome to part 15 of music production with Ableton Live. Uh, so this is the level one section. So we're sort of looking at all the basics and getting you all started. Um, so we've covered quite a lot so far. We've obviously looked at uh, MIDI clips, audio clips, uh, and how we can change those over time with envelopes and, and various other bits. Um, but up until now, we've always kind of worked either exclusively with just MIDI tracks or just audio tracks. Now, obviously we can have a mixture of audio and MIDI tracks um, and I would think pretty much everything I produce has a combination of MIDI and audio. So we'll have a look at how we can sort of get these two uh, to work together. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so we're going to start off with a drum groove, a MIDI drum groove. So if you're kind of following this through, you may already have a project uh, with the groove open. I'm just going to start with a new one. So I've got the 808 kit in here. And we'll just get a little groove going. Um, so let's just do a traditional kind of four to the floor pattern. Um, Found that's something on the clap. So, and I guess we should have a bit of uh, hi hat in there. So, one way of, um, I, again, I can't remember if I've showed you this before or not, but one way of. Obviously, if we want eighth notes going all the way along here on the hi-hat, like the one and two and beat, obviously I can click along and do them all like that. Particularly if you've got more than one bar, it can be quite quite time-consuming. The way I generally do it is I'll put my first two in, and then I kind of lasso around that first beat, and then just Control D or I think it's Command D on the Mac, and you can just every time you press it, it's going to duplicate that pattern for you. So it's a lot quicker. Um, let's stick that as an open. Okay, so we've got a basic kind of pattern there. Um, so what we'll do now is, if you've not got an audio track in there, if it looks like that, we want to create an audio track. Two ways to do it. You can right click and choose insert audio track. Slightly quicker way, keyboard shortcut, control T or command T on a Mac. Uh, great one to remember, and that's going to stick you an audio track in there next to our MIDI track. One thing I would do, this is how I have my uh, settings set up. If you go into your preferences, and then we're going to go to the warp section, what I do is uh, loop slash warp short samples. I keep that on um, auto. Okay, you've got various different ones you can do here. But I generally just leave it on auto. That means whenever I bring a short sample in here, it's going to already be warped for me, and I haven't got to sort of fiddle about with it. And also when you're auditioning stuff, it will warp it for you, so it, it sort of plays in time. So if we go to our packs, and we're going to go to Loop Mister's Mixtape again, which is the one we've been using in the other ones, uh, which you can obviously get a free copy of, which links are in the, uh, the earlier uh, videos in this series. And uh, we're going to go to clips and we'll scroll down to we'll have percussion up tempo so we'll just kind of kind of we'll just try and find a bit of percussion that will go with this drum loop for now um so that won't i've got a tambourine shaker thing that's a bit frantic what's this one yeah. okay that might work um Yeah, okay, that might work. But if you if you look on the, the file here, you can see it says it's 175 beats per minute. So when I just, if nothing's playing up here, when I click on that and audition it, it's going to do it to its original tempo. All right. If like, this is playing, it will then warp it to my uh, project tempo. Okay, so... Right, for the sake of fiddling about too long, we'll, we'll have that. That'll do for now. So we're going to just drag that into our audio track. Uh, I'm just going to have my uh, warping onto Complex Pro because it will sound better. And... Okay, so right, that kind of works quite nicely, actually. If we get rid of the loop player. So it's giving us kind of a lot more sort of high end, a bit more top end. Just keep an eye on your meter down here. If you start going into the red, don't turn this one down, okay? Because you're not getting rid of the problem. All you're doing is just turning the overall volume down. You want to turn these down. So I'm just going to turn these down a little bit just so we've uh, got plenty of headroom over there. And 
cushion's a little bit high, so I'm just going to balance the volume up there. Okay, now uh, let's we can perhaps add a few bits in here. Um, I just want this to be a little bit busier for reasons you'll see in the next um, part of the video. Okay, so there we've got our um, MIDI clip and our audio clip uh, working together nicely. Obviously, there's loads of different ones in here. You can choose whichever one uh, fits the bill for you. What I would do for now is just uh, do it with a percussion uh, kind of loop rather than... Um, anything melodic because we're going to put some melodic stuff in later when we start to get into our um, arrangement a little bit more the other thing we're going to make sure as well for now is that we have our clips both in what are called the same scene okay so this um, horizontal line across here is a scene right so you want to make sure they're lined up in the both in the same scene um, so I say this is a scene and we're going to look at scenes in more detail in the next few videos we can launch both clips just by launching the scene here so if we click play here okay that's going to launch uh the whole scene so uh that's it for this one this is dead simple it's pretty straightforward this is more about sort of a bit of preparation for what's coming up next uh, where we're going to have a look at scenes in a lot more detail. So thanks for watching this one. If you've got any questions or comments, stick them in the box below. Um, and I will see you in part 16. Thanks for watching.